Hi, I'm Leah Jensen. Welcome to my talk, The Lisnikerher Scabbards, a study in historiography, iconography, artisans, and river cults of the insular Latin. The Lisnikerher Scabbards are a set of three Iron Age insular Latin Irish sword scabbards dating from around 200 to 100 BCE. In this case, the term insular refers to a Latin art from what is now the UK and Ireland. The design scheme of the scabbards is based primarily on S figures, which run up and down the length. The design work is typical of the Latin style in many ways, including the interplay between positive and negative space and curvilinear lines. They also show the unique features of the insular Latin style with their use of engraving, asymmetry, compass work, hatching, and tightly coiled spirals. I'll be using primarily line drawings in this presentation, since corrosion on the bronze sometimes makes it difficult to see the design work at first glance. However, I included this image of Lisney Crowher II to give a better sense of the materials and engraving. My research reconsiders the Lisney Crowher scabbards chiefly in terms of their chronology, iconography, and function in Latin society. Dating weaponry from the Insular Iron Age proves difficult because of the lack of both a historical record and lack of funerary contexts, as well as the fact that the Lisnikar scabbard's use may have spanned a couple of generations. In the past, it was assumed that Latin finds in Europe preceded those in Britain, which preceded those in Ireland. This led some scholars to date the Lisnikar scabbards to no earlier than the first century BCE. This older diffusion model held that Latin culture dispersed outwards from the continent, inherently suggesting that any new artistic innovations were not insular in origin. This diffusionist model is still foundational to the study of early Celtic art, despite its outdated nature. More recent scholarship has drawn parallels between continental Latin styles and insular ones, which helps support an earlier dating for the Lisnikrover scabbards. Given the difficulties with dating and advances of recent scholarship, it's just as likely that Latin art in Britain, Europe, and the continent developed more or less in parallel, resulting in a date for the Lisnikrover scabbards of around 300 to 100 BCE. More recent archaeological models also support the idea that insular Latin art is not necessarily derivative of its continental counterpart due to evidence of trade between the insular Celts, continental Celts, and cultures in the Mediterranean. Historiography surrounding the diffusion model is particularly relevant to the Lisnikroher scabbards, since past scholarship has seen their iconography as being directly influenced by a similar set of scabbards from Yorkshire. Examining the iconography of the Lisnikroher scabbards can shed further light on the connections between insular and continental Latin cultures, as well as call into question the idea that design elements of the Lisnikroher scabbards were derived chiefly from a similar set in Yorkshire. The Lisnikroher scabbards show continental influence through components of their iconography, which are reminiscent of the continental Latin Valdolgesheim style, the scabbard's overall shape, and the presence of Mediterranean iconography on a similar scabbard. One example of the continental influence on the iconography of Lisnikroher I is a comma leaf design, which is reminiscent of late 4th or early 3rd century BCE work from the continent. The scabbards also show continental influence in terms of the shape of the shape at the end, which is more similar to designs of Gaulish make than other insular finds. Looking at similar Latin Irish scabbards provides further evidence of continental influence. The tomb scabbard, an earlier Irish scabbard, shows influence from as far away as the Mediterranean in the form of a half palmet and remnants of a second half palmet. Palmettes are classical forms of ornament based on the palm leaf and are rare in insular Latin art. Rather than direct influence from the Mediterranean, motifs such as palmettes could have spread through the continent to England and Ireland, as Mediterranean themes had been a part of the continental Latin for art for a couple of centuries by the time of the Lisnikroher scabbards. Continental influence on the Lisnikroher scabbards combined with the palmette motif on a similar scabbard shows that the eclectic and evolving nature of continental Latin art is also true of its insular counterpart. The Lisnikroher scabbards are often compared with a similar set of scabbards from Yorkshire, with some past scholars saying they're an outright, quote, transplant, end quote, 
of British ideas to Northern Irish soil. The Yorkshire scabbards date to no later than the third century BCE. And like the Lusnikroher scabbards, there's a lack of definitive dating as some of the same design motifs were used for a long span of time as were the scabbards themselves. These scabbards are similar to the Lusnikroher scabbards in terms of their plentifully ornamented ground, compositional organization in waves and S figures and artistic techniques of engraving and compass work. Given these similarities, it's easy to see why relationships between the two sets of scabbards were drawn by past scholarship. However, there are also some overall differences between the Yorkshire scabbards and the Northern Irish ones with regards to the construction of the S figures, swelling of the line work, and the use of negative space. Generally speaking, the Lisnacroher scabbards have more circular S returns on their S figures, and the hairspring spirals curl more tightly. In the Yorkshire grouping, the scabbard on the left stands out for its lack of defined S figures compared with the regular tiered approach taken on the Lusnikroher scabbards. The spiral finials of the S returns reach outside the S figure, drawing the eye up, out, and away from the main wave tendril, which travels the scabbard's length. They also tend to have more negative space, where the Lusnikroher scabbards are almost completely covered in ornament. The middle scabbard in the Yorkshire set stands out for the amount of ground which remains undecorated and the fact that there is no completely connected tendril tying together the, the design. Given the differences between the Lisnacroher scabbards and the Yorkshire ones, as well as connections to continental Latin art, it paints too simplistic of a picture to say that the Lisnacroher scabbards are simply derivative of the Yorkshire ones. However, given that they have some iconographic similarity, I'd argue that a similar dating of the Lisnikroher scabbards would make sense, resulting in a slightly earlier chronology than mentioned in older scholarship. The Lisnikroher scabbards also share iconographic similarity with the Witham shield, another insular Latin piece. The Witham shield is the bronze facing of a wooden shield dating from around 300 to 200 BCE. The ornamentation in the upper and lower roundels bears significant resemblance to the Lisnacroher scabbards in terms of their use of S figures and a wavy line in higher relief, which circles the outside of the roundel. The iconography of the Lisnacroher scabbards shows that they are from a workshop in Northern Ireland, which was working with knowledge of design motifs from Britain and the continent. However, this doesn't mean they're necessarily derivative of other insular work, but instead are another local manifestation of the eclecticism that so defines Latin art. My research also considers the role of the Lisnacroher scabbards in Latin society. The fine spot of the Lisnacroher scabbards may tell us something about their function. Since they were found in water, they may have connection to ritual or ceremony. Bodies of water, from springs to rivers to lakes during the insular, insular Latin, show evidence of votive offerings, which makes sense when considering the Celtic reverence for, for water. From both Roman sources and early literature, it's clear that both the continental and insular Celts had deities and legends associated with water. An insular Latin reverence for water is also a good explanation for why so many of these decorated weaponry finds, such as the Lisnacroher scabbards, come from or near water. The fine spot of other pieces of insular decorated weaponry, including the Battersea shield and Wandsworth shield boss from the Thames, as well as the Witham sword and Witham shield from the river Witham, also show a pattern of insular Latin weaponry deposited in water. When this pattern is considered in light of the connections between Celtic religion or mythology and water, it's not a large leap to assume a connection between the Lisnacroher scabbards, their fine spot, and a religious or mythical context. Perhaps these scabbards may have been votive offerings to a water deity. The Lisnikroher scabbards, when considered in context with other finds and current knowledge of insular and continental Latin art, paint a picture of a society with cultural connections to the continent and Britain and a slightly delayed but parallel development with other parts of the Latin world. They help us understand more about art and rituals in Iron Age society. The Lisnikroher scabbards are, however, just a piece of the puzzle. There is much more room for future scholarship to reconsider old work and older finds in the context of our current frameworks for thinking about the European Iron Age and Latin art.